Hi! This instructional video is a continuation of graphing quadratic functions. On the last instructional video, 401, we talked about the quick graphing method, sketching that is. And the way we did it was, we said if the function is given in standard form, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, we said the a determines whether, well, if the a is positive, the parabola opens up. And if it's negative, of course, opens down. We also mentioned that the c, the constant, is the y-intercept. And looking at the a and the b coefficients, if their signs are both positive or both negative, if they're the same, the parabola will shift left if it's same. If A and the B have opposite signs, one is plus and one is negative, it doesn't matter which is which. If it's different, it will shift to the right. So let's go and use the same problems from the last instructional video. We're going to first identify the A, B, and the C. And since they're in standard form, we could just go A is 2. And we could see right away that B is negative 4. And C is negative 1. In order to find the vertex, you have to find out where is the middle of the parabola, the axis of symmetry. Sometimes we call it line of symmetry. And the formula for that is x is equal to negative b over 2a. So we're going to substitute in the coefficients in a constant. So we get negative times the negative b, which is negative 4, over 2 times the a, and a is 2. And when we evaluate, negative times negative 4 is positive 4 over 2 times 2, which is 4. X value becomes 1. Now, for the vertex, we need to know the coordinates for the both X and the Y. We have the X. And where do we get the Y? Well, we take that X, which is 1, and substitute it back into the given function. So that's Y is equal to 2X two squared, but X is going to be 1. Square minus 4 times X, which is 1 minus the 1. When we evaluate, we get 2 times 1 squared, which is simply 2, minus 4 times 1 is 4, minus 1. Evaluate across, well, that's 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. So the vertex, the coordinate is x and y is 1 and 3. Vertex is 1 and 3. Now we can get a better idea of what the quadratic is supposed to look like. If you can see it, that is. <laughs> right here. Let's make it a little tiny because I'm running out of space. So we know the A is going to open up. The parabola will open up. Y intercept is negative 1. And since the signs are opposite, it goes to the right. But where on the right? Well, it goes to 1. Here's X is 1. And there's the middle. And where does this parabola change direction? At the coordinate 1 and 3. So 1... And, I'm sorry, that's a negative 3. So, phew, 1, 2, 3. There it is. That's the vertex. That's 1 and negative 3. And the y-intercept is 1. I mean, negative 1. I'm all over the place today. And we know, symmetrically, if x or if the y value is negative 1 on the left side of the axis of symmetry, it should be the same on the right side. And so when we draw the parabola, it should look like so. There it is. And that gives us a better estimate of what the graph supposed to look like. Now, I want you to try number two, and maybe even number three. Okay, so you said on number two, A, B, and C, they're identified as negative three, five, and negative one. To find the axis of symmetry, we use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. We substitute the given numbers, we have negative five. over 2 times negative 3. Uh-oh. This doesn't look pretty. We have negative 5 over negative 6, which is just positive 5 over 6. We have a fraction. Something less than a 1. X of symmetry. Now we're going to take that. Yes, we are. And substitute it in back to the given function. Y is equal to negative 3x squared. And put 5 over 6 in wherever the x's are. And evaluate. 
This is like taking the splinters out of your fingers. Woo! Order of operation dictates that we do 5 over 6 squared. So that's 3 times 25 over 36. Multiply across on the second. So we got 25 over 6 minus the 1. The negative 3 coefficient reduces the denominator 36 by 12. So we end up with negative 25 over 12 plus 25 over 6 minus 1. Common denom denominator between the three terms is 12. So we get 12. Now that's already 25 negative with the 12. How does 6 become a 12 denominator? Times 2. So 2 times 25, 50. How does negative 1 over 1 become a 12? Multiply by 12, so it becomes negative 12. Evaluate across, we get 50 minus, what is that, 37? Yeah. Over 12. And so this becomes, what is that, 13 over 12? So what's the coordinate? 5, 6, and, oh, I hope you can see that. And 13 over 12, vertex, is 5 over 6 and 13 over 12. And how do you graph that? Well, <laughs> here we go. Well, axis of symmetry is 5, 6. Here's 1. That's 5, 5. I mean, uh, 6, 6. And 5, 6 is somewhere just before that. I'm estimating, of course. And the vertex is at 13 over 12. So if this is 12 over 12, 13 over 12 is just yonder. The y-intercept is negative 1. On the left of the axis of symmetry, that means the same as on the right side of the symmetry, whatever that might be. And it's going to go down because A is negative. There it is. <laughs> it's a better sketch than what we had on 401. And this one? Something's missing, you say. The B. So A is 2. B is 0. C is negative 4. Again, C is negative 4. Find the vertex by axis of symmetry, negative B over 2A, which is going to be simply 0 because B is 0. How do you find the vertex? Well, plug it back into the function. Y is equal to 2 times 0 squared minus 4. So Y is simply negative 4. So what's the vertex? Vertex is coordinate 0 and negative 4. To graph, 0 and negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Opens up. There it is. The vertex also happens to be the y-intercept. And I hope this gives you a better idea of how to graph or sketch a quadratic function. Good luck!